Today, I'm going to break down everything you need to make a car in Blender. By this, I mean everything must be a quad. Quad. You know the drill. Squares. Let's go. Adding and removing verts. So, we'll start off small and in no particular order, we'll work our way through and I'll explain everything you need to make a car. First thing you'll need to do is add and remove verts. So if you press Ctrl R, you can make a loop cut. If you click on it and move it wherever you want or press the right button to let it land in the middle. And this is how you add more vertices or a loop cut to your square. The other thing we might need to do is once we've done that is remove them. To do that, you press X and you can either delete the edges or vertices or dissolve them. So if we press delete, it will delete everything. And that's like, sometimes it's good, sometimes you don't want that. So if you press delete and then dissolve the vertices, it will keep your model intact, yeah? Dissolve's a very useful feature for removing them. Number two, using the knife to cut things. Sometimes you need to persuade the verts to go the way you want them so you use K on your keyboard and it brings up the knife click on the corner and you click on another one press enter and it will cut you a new line very useful for dictating how you want your geometry to flow joining separating and copying layers say like you want the window hole you'd select the loop cut all the way around you know what I mean and then you press shift and D and wiggle it to make sure it's copied and then you'd press P to make a new selection with it. And as we can see here, we've got a new layer with it. So if we now select this one and go into edit mode, we can now operate this one independently. Yeah. Now, if we wanted to rejoin that layer back into its original layer, what we can do is if we tab back out, if we select both of them, make sure that the yellow one's the one that's going to be in the end, yeah, so, and then press Control and J, it will merge it back into the same layer again. So obviously you can go back in, select it, press P to remove the selection to make two layers, and then if you want to put them back together, just press Control and J. Once you've joined them, you can go back in, and if you hover over each object and press L, you can individually select those objects again. So obviously you can just press P and separate them again, yeah? Extruding and tidying all. So you've got a model and you want to extend it. It's as simple as selecting the edge and pressing E on whichever axis you want to pull it out like so. And then once you've built a panel, you can basically select the edge loop and press extrude on the, on the X like that. And you can make corners like that. The thing to look out for with this is when joining in a corner like this, if we select these edges and we extrude it out, we need to make sure that this corner is joined here. Now, usually you'll have this on, auto merge vertices, but what you can also do is select them both or you can select the first one and then select the last one. And then when you press M, you can merge at the last. And you need to make sure that your corners join up, otherwise you'll get problems in your geometry, you know what I mean? Yeah, obviously you can just fix that with a knife cut and just delete that with a dissolve edge. Yeah, and you got yourself the coolest looking car in the world. Creating sharp edges. Bevels versus the subdivision crease. So there's two ways you can make a crease. One is to use the mean crease over here to create these purple lines and tell the subdivision that we want it to crease there. It's the non-destructive way of doing it. Then the other, which you can see on here, is beveled edges where we have one line either side of the crease that we want and these two dictate how tight we want that crease to be, yeah? Both are good. I usually find that I use creases at the beginning while I'm forming the shape and then when I've committed to it, I like to go in and bevel all the edges and dictate how I want them. I don't really like the bevel modifier, I don't find it's accurate enough for a complex object like this. Whereas you can use the mean bevel weight and do it that way, but I kind of like to do it manually. When you import into other softwares, it's not necessarily going to understand all this like command structure. So it's best to do it the traditional way, how I was learned in 3ds Max was to do edge creasing this way, yeah? And if we back out, we can see the flaw in the subdivision method look. Can you see like little creasing issues here kind of thing? Whereas if we look down where we grow bevel, it's nice and squared off basically. It's all about the squares, get them quads in, you know what I mean? So yeah, 
sub D is very good, but it can get heavy very fast. I don't like to run my renders while I'm creating past subdivision level 2. And basically, if it doesn't look good after 2, then you need to improve your model, yeah? It's just an assistant to help you round surfaces, I find. And then when it does come to render, when you do bob it on subdivision level 3, you're basically just improving the lighting after that, like getting extra crispy corners and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And that's what you should be aiming for, really. Perfection after subdivision level 2 kind of thing. Moving verts and smoothing. So you've got a model that has got like dints in it and it's not perfectly flat. This is always an issue when you're making cars. Should we see how we can solve it? So select the object and go into edit mode. We can see our geometry is all messy. Now what you can do when you select the vert and press G to move it around. If you press G again it will lock it onto the edges. You know what I mean? So it will always follow whichever line it is. So if you take this all the way up to the top like that so it's near enough the same. If you turn off merge up here as well just to make sure and you press gg and go all the way to the top and then press gg again to bring it back down that newly formed flattened line you can basically like smooth and flatten out geometry just using the basic math of it you know what i mean uh, and this is awesome it's very useful for tidying up dints as you can see so if we just do the same for these ones here we can see we've now got a reasonably smooth surface now another way to smooth the surface out is to is select your faces that need flattening. And if we go back to number one, so we're in vert mode, we can come up to here and go to vertex and we click on smooth vertice. You can see it's just smoothed it out there. And what we can do is we can increase it so it's even more. Oh, that did a bit too much. If you like, put it to one, you can see it's like smoothing it out for us, making it okay. It does an okay job, it's not perfect but it does get you most of the way there, you know what I mean? So, but there's other tools that we can use, such as relax and flatten. See so if we just press G and Z there. We're basically there, aren't we? So, lovely and smooth. Mm -mm -mm. Loop tools add-on. Make sure you always turn this add-on on because it always makes everything a joy to build, mainly for circles. If we go into our wheel, like so, and we select a couple of geometries and we break them, basically make them make them look rubbish what you can do is press alt and select the whole loop and then you can come over to in your end panel and go to edit after you've installed the add-on and click circle and it basically makes everything a circle again it's awesome i love that button i use it a lot so i thought i'd show you Press circle again, boom, fixes everything. That button is gold. Thank you, Mr. Blender, I love that button. Right then, number eight, selecting vert loops. It's handy to know these shortcuts. So if you press one, two, or three, it can select verts, edge or face mode yeah so if we're in edge mode we're selecting two at once i like edge mode because you're selecting two at once basically now what you can do in here is if you want to select a whole loop you press alt and click on the edge and it will select the whole loop for you that is a very useful shortcut another one is if you press you can select one vertice and then when you press control on the next one it will find the shortest route it's two very useful features the control for the shortest route and alt for the entire loop yeah so you press alt on the edge and exit all if you want to add to that loop press alt and shift and you can also add another loop to the selection what you can also do from here is if you press control and plus it will increase the select and it also goes for say if you press minus it will decrease the selection as well so plus 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 you know what i mean it's very useful to know those shortcuts correcting your scale so let's make an example say we add an object and then we scale it up in object mode and we've manipulated it what we need to do now is correct the scale because we didn't do it in edit mode we did it in object mode the scale has now changed so what we need to do now is press Control and a and when we can basically apply the location the rotation or the scale or all the transforms but this one we're going to do all transform so once you've applied it and we look at our item we can see our scale is one so if we scale it up again you see how it's changing 
So we need to press Control A and apply the scale and it'll bring it back to like correct kind of thing. This is important for lighting and UV like texture mappings and things like that. It's also good necessary for rigs and things. It's all about measurements and it needs measurements. It's a very important shortcut you need to know. Yeah. Number 10. Unwrapping for things like carbon fiber. So you've got yourself a carbon fiber texture and if you look closely you can see ooh, it's gone all screwy kind of thing like there's there and then there's there as well kind of thing. Can you see it? it's gone all messy. Now what the trick is with this after you've applied your scale is to click on it and then go into edit mode and select all of your vertices and press U to unwrap. What we need to do on this because it is kind of like a cube we need it to be a, to be projected on to the surface rather than being stretched around on it yeah so if we click cube projection it will assume all the data like it'll basically measure the distance as opposed to it just like assuming everything's the same size yeah so after that if you back out you can see you've got lovely carbon fiber now kind of thing yeah lovely jubbly if you put creases and seams in but this usually like works out kind of like okay for me you can use multiple options there's different ones if you press u you can like smart uv project it as well this sometimes works it depends on your situation like this one it didn't really work for me it like kind of made it a bit weird so i ended up going with a cube projection now because it's like it's cylinder that it might be worked out there but if we try it again on this one click this one select all and then we press cube projection press tab we can see it's a lot more like flat and stable you know what I mean and it's it's worth experimenting between the different ones you know what I mean different modes work for different things so if we click on this one as well apply the scale go into here select all unwrap cube projection back out we've got like a uniform kind of carbon fiber now yeah well like I say it's a, it's a fine tune without going into creasing and stuff like that just to make sure everything's uniform and it don't really stretch stretch because i kind of like these like seams here because it's like carbon fiber does come like that you know what i mean so i kind of like it it's up to you to experiment anyway and then you can have like carbon fiber wherever you want it <laughs> splitters yeah can you see it? look at my carbon fiber splitters boys oh she's so good tries to quads so you find a model but it's all in triangles and it's like all joined up and it's a mess this is made for gaming basically. So what we can do in order to bring it back for our subdivision workflow is if you select everything and press F3 and type try, tries to quads and click on this one, it will basically bring everything back to squares for you. It's extremely useful and then you can go back in and separate all your edges off and stuff like that. Now uh, it's not perfect, you might have to go in and like dissolve or add or you know what I mean, manipulate it to get true perfection but sometimes models are really that good anyway so but sometimes you might need to build your own and it's good to know that one number 12 merge by distance this one's extremely useful as well so say like we're in here and we've just converted everything to quads usually what happens is we get a lot of stray geometry so what's useful to do is press m and do a merge by distance but by this, with the, can you see how many it's got rid of? It's got rid of 55,000 vertices already. And if we bring our little tool menu up here, we can see we're on zero point all the way to like one. So if we just type in zero, we can see it, it gets rid of 52,000 just with exact matches kind of thing. Yeah. So that's always handy to do and get dusted out of the way so we ain't got any mystery damage that's like really confusing you kind of thing. But this as well will likely break the damp break the model as well so be aware it's it is damaging but it's necessary it's something you need to know how to do number 13 altering the normals you'll come across this problem i'm pretty sure where you've modeled something and then you've got like a hole in your in your mesh and it's like what is going on here so if we go into edit mode and i'm already selected on it if we select it we can what i can tell you is happening is basically this square is back to front to everything else and the normals are incorrect so in order to change it if we press alt and n we get this normals menu where we can either flip it or recalculate the outside both will work if you press shift n you can just recalculate it so but if we click flip because it's usually just one that's the issue it will fix it kind of thing and if we press shift and n or to do to do shift and n you're going to need to select everything and then press shift n and it'll recalculate the outside for you yeah simple stuff 
Number 14. Using scale to flatten things. Sounds weird, but let's try it out. If we press our trick Alt and N to select the whole loop, what we can do is basically press scale, and I believe it's on the X, and then press zero, and it'll completely flatten it for you. Press enter, boom. Lovely jubbly. There's other ways of doing this as well, using our loop tools. So if we go over here, what we can do is with it, with our loop selected is click flatten and it will also do the same thing. It's very good this loop tools. With these 14 tool sets you should be unstoppable in what you can create in Blender. If you think I've missed something it's probably because I've already covered it in another video. I have every tutorial you need to make a car in 3D. Heck, there's even a guide how to make a racing game too. So like, comment, subscribe and thank you for watching everyone. Bye-bye.